How many times a week do you fill up your car? Once a week? Twice? Maybe more? Well, imagine what it would be like to fill your car not with gasoline, but with electricity. And imagine that your electric car is not only stylish, but aerodynamically efficient. It runs clean. In fact, there's no exhaust system. Your electric car is comfortable. It's even equipped with air conditioning. And it's no slouch on the open road either. It'll do zero to 60 in eight seconds flat. Just imagine. Recently, a team of innovative GM designers, engineers, and technicians did just that. But they not only imagined such a vehicle, they created one. It's called Impact, and it's creating quite a stir. We are extremely pleased this morning to be able to introduce to you a project that keeps GM on the cutting edge of technology. It's called Impact, and it's an exciting new electric car, the first one in 10 years. It can go further and faster than any previous production-oriented electric vehicle. It can go from zero to 60 miles an hour in eight seconds, and it has all the comforts and convenience of a modern automobile. I thought it was a very interesting vehicle, very interesting concept. Um, I like the fact that it's the first time they've gone through and done the engineering that needs to go with a, a production electric car. It seemed uh, very smooth and uh, terribly fast. Uh, I was able to accelerate quite quickly. Well, after getting out of it, I'm very impressed with the smoothness and the acceleration of the car. I'm normally accustomed to the internal combustion cars, the Camaro and the Corvettes, and uh, I was really impressed. Uh, I think there's a uh, definite future for the electronic car. I think the acceleration is reasonable. As, uh, in general, cars are performing more and better and better in the last few years. And this car, surprisingly, would be competitive, I think, with uh, most performance cars available today. The Impact was built first as an engineering test vehicle where advancements in electronics, structural materials, motor design, tires, and batteries could be tested. Well, it was a kind of an outgrowth of the uh, Sun Racer project that was done by... Uh, uh, General Motors and uh, the fact that we won the race in Australia in 87 by some two and a half days gave us a, a strong feeling that uh, uh, we had a, a pretty good lock on some technology and uh, so it looked like a, a kind of a, a good evolution to uh, examine uh, a pure electric car. We wanted to um, kind of drive a stake in the ground if you will as to what uh, contemporary thinking but uh, producible uh, electric vehicle would look like and how it would perform uh, if we were to build such a vehicle. Previously, a lot of electric cars had been done by converting a production car, which is certainly an easy way to do it, but the trouble is you end up having to make a lot of compromises in doing that. The production car was not designed for the ultra-low rolling resistance, the good aerodynamics, and so by the time you're done, you've made so many compromises that you don't have a viable car anymore. So the approach here was to take a clean sheet of paper approach to an all-new car. The impact is distinctive in a lot of ways. It's front-wheel drive, but there are two motors, one for each wheel. The gross weight checks in at a little more than 2,500 pounds, with 870 pounds belonging to its battery pack. The impact is equipped with rack and pinion steering, specially designed radial tires, and a single-speed transmission, no shifting. As the design of the impact began, several key objectives helped to form the challenge facing the team. Earlier attempts to produce a viable electric car were met with concerns about driving range and complaints about performance and style. But from the very beginning, impact was going to be different. To achieve a cruising range of over 100 miles per battery charge, the designers of impact were charged with creating the maximum in aerodynamic efficiency. Well, we set targets for each one of the systems in the car from an efficiency standpoint, and the aerodynamics of the car, its drag coefficient is 0.19, and that's, that's about half what current vehicles are, uh, passenger car vehicles. And uh, some of the things that allow you to do that with an electric drive, there is no drive shaft down the center of the car that you have in, a, say, in a rear-wheel drive car. There's no exhaust system. So the underneath of the car can be very clean and smooth. As a matter of fact, it has a complete belly pan uh, underneath the entire car. That makes it very aerodynamically uh, smooth. 
and uh, attention to every detail in the car. Now, the car is nine and a half inches uh, narrower in the back. And so it has kind of a, a teardrop shape to it, but a very contemporary uh, uh, feel to it and, and look. Any aerodynamic shape would have a, a tapered uh, surface going from front to back. And what the objective is, is to have as small a base area as you can. The smoother you can do that, uh, the, the better chance you've got of lowering the drag on a vehicle. So it's an important element. In this car, the drag is very, very important compared to a gasoline car. With our large battery pack in there, we have the equivalent energy of about a gallon of gasoline. So you can see that it's like trying to make a car that gets 100 miles per gallon. So we have to push on efficiency everywhere we possibly can. Each thing that you put on the vehicle in terms of a feature that may consume power reduces the range of the vehicle. So each system, again, has to be optimized. So we have a, an air conditioning system that's going in. It's a, uh, you know, it's an electric motor-driven compressor, and we have the most efficient motor design uh, that we know how to make driving that compressor. Uh, so each aspect of the car is optimized because this car is not forgiving. When you use up the power, it impacts the range of the vehicle, and range is a... Uh, a uh, large uh, concern to us from a uh, customer acceptance standpoint. Testing of the impact for aerodynamic efficiency has been extensive. Recently, the vehicle was taken to the GM Aerodynamic Laboratory at the Tech Center in Warren. This full-scale wind tunnel can produce air speeds of up to 150 miles per hour. The on-site computer system records the test data for later comparison to clay model and other preliminary test results. Our purpose is to see how we did from translating from third scale to full scale. And then we'll do a, a couple of uh, changes to the vehicle. We know what happened in, in reduced scale. So we want to check and see if they, they're still holding up as drag reducing uh, items in, in full scale. If history or tradition has its way, it will be somewhat higher than what we got in reduced scale. Now, we, we normally take that into account in all of our testing, and we put in a, an adjustment factor that we've developed from years of doing this thing that allows us to project fairly accurately what the, the full-size running car is going to be. In addition to aerodynamic efficiency, another key component in the challenge for increased range and performance is Impact's power source. The battery pack contains 32 10-volt lead-acid batteries. It's a, an evolution that Delco uh, Remy has uh, been working with. It's called a recombinant lead-acid battery, and it has uh, got more uh, higher power density, and it's uh, smaller in size. Uh, we didn't want to look at uh, some of the more exotic battery research that's going on that, that may be in the 10 to 15 years uh, out that might keep us from going into production with this kind of a vehicle. Rather than wait for a breakthrough, let's say, let's take the batteries that we've got here today and see if we can make a viable electric car that goes over 100 miles. And that, that we've done. Now, a breakthrough in batteries will just make a car like this that much better. I mean, maybe we will see a 300 mile range in the future. The impact is powered by two alternating current induction motors, one for each wheel. These high speed motors are designed to minimize both size and weight while delivering maximum power. At 60 miles per hour, for example, these small electric motors turn at 9,500 RPM, compared to the average 2,000 RPM for a gasoline engine. Combining this technology, then, with the battery pack and the sleek style help to produce some very impressive performance results. The one thing that we didn't compromise at all on is the acceleration performance. We wanted to make it something that people would, would sort of think twice and say, wow, that's pretty fast. And so we had an initial target of 8.0 seconds for 0 to 60 miles an hour, and we actually met that uh, target. What we did was we ran a uh, comparison between um, a Mazda Miata and, and a Nissan 300ZX uh, car on a drag race, if you will, and uh, 0 to 60, the impact will walk away from these two cars. And uh, as we did that, um, it, it really moved the electric vehicle from the golf cart kind of mentality to this is a viable candidate for uh, 
merging with traffic, uh, fitting in to the current driving uh, uh, requirements that we have on today's road systems. One thing about this car that you don't get on very many internal combustion powered cars is throttle response, fun to drive that is really second to none. It really it has a, an immediate feeling of connection between your wishes and the accelerator pedal and what the car does that you don't find very often. It's a fun car to drive. Though produced as an engineering test car, the impact made brief appearances in Los Angeles, Chicago, and several European cities. During its initial showing in Los Angeles, four out of five persons surveyed said they would definitely consider buying an electric car. 95% saw it as a sophisticated high-tech car, and 97% said driving the impact would help the environment. At the tech center recently, GM employees echoed these rave reviews during an impromptu showing. It's nice, you know, it's got a real nice aerodynamic look, you know, it's good to see uh, GM coming out with things that seem to be, you know, on the high tech, on the verge of uh, some really breakthroughs, so, you know, it's, it's impressive. Oh, I've heard a lot about it. I've heard how fast it goes and what its top speed can do, and I'm very impressed with it. Now, I like it a lot. Now that you've had a chance to see it, is there something in particular that, uh, that kind of sticks out in your mind that you like? The styling. Being an electric car, you can do a lot with the styling, and I like the way it looks. I think the advantages are you have far, far fewer moving parts. You're going to have much more reliability. I think the car will probably go two to three times longer. Um, and I think that's where we need to be going. It's clean, uh, no pollution. Yeah, I'd buy one today. It wasn't long ago that one could only imagine an electric car like the Impact. Today, that has changed. I'm very pleased to announce today that we are taking a major step toward helping our country meet its transportation needs and environmental goals. We are proceeding with our plan to produce and sell the impact. With the future of the impact now decided, American car buyers can look forward to an aerodynamically efficient, longer range electric car that looks great and moves even better. So go ahead, imagine the impact. The wait may be shorter than you think. <laughs>